we were talking about uh, linear triatomic molecule last time so i'll start by doing a quick recap and then we'll continue from there okay so there's the there's the plan for today um so we were saying that we have a molecule which is linear and by that i mean that in its equilibrium configuration all the atoms of the molecule are uh, aligned in a line okay so we were writing like the following so let's say this is the line on which all the particles are aligned um this is particle number 1 this is particle number 2 this has some mass capital m and the two at the ends have the same mass okay and we also said that we are going to um measure their displacements from these position these are the positions of equilibrium okay so if this particle gets displaced from its position either this direction or that direction i'll call it x1 okay similarly x2 and x3 okay and our equilibrium is at um x1 equal to x2 and that is equal to x3 and they all are zero okay now um we had written down the lagrangian of the system as half ti j xi dot xj dot minus half uij xi xj let me also remind you what the tij is the matrix corresponding to tij i was writing as this t this is just diagonal uh diagonal matrix with these entries Okay, and we had written down U. Maybe I should write it down again. The matrix corresponding to U I J, I was denoting by this U. Okay, bold face basically. This U is equal to um, K minus K zero. You should check that what I am writing is symmetric. Uh, zero minus K K looks. symmetric so it's good so that's the matrix um we have and then we said if we do a transformation from x so this x is a basically a column vector to z um let me write the components here or maybe i should write the components of the x uh, so x i so this is same as before let me write it again x i if i do the transformation that instead of x i start using z i which are related to the x i s by this transformation so you just absorb the square root of mass in the corresponding x and that is the definition of z if you do so then your lagrangian becomes the following then your lagrangian becomes half z i square z i dot square this is the kinetic term minus half i j they all run from 1 to 3 u i u u i j prime z i z j okay and u prime will still be a symmetric matrix and then we had found the eigen values of u prime okay, that's what we did last time we found the eigen values of of u prime okay by u prime i mean the matrix u prime which corresponds to um these elements okay 
and we found that it has three eigenvalues which we expect because our equation was cubic and the eigenvalues are the following lambda 1 is k over m lambda 2 is k over m times 1 plus 2m the entire thing divided by capital M and lambda 3 was 0 I have changed the order in which uh, I mean what I am calling lambda 3 I was calling in the last lecture as lambda 1 but now we will follow um, this naming ok uh, this will be uh, I mean that is how I want to do note that this quantity lambda 1 is greater than 0 the lambda 2 is also greater than 0 and lambda 3 is anyway 0 so this is where we had stopped last time and let's uh, proceed from here now what I want to do is I want to put the second quadratic form which is here see this is anyway diagonal now not only diagonal the coefficients are unity but this uh, quadratic form I want to put as a sum of squares and that's the that's the plan so let me go to the next slide or maybe maybe yeah next slide let's go so just remember you have a u half u prime z i z j okay so now our task is put this quadratic form u i j u prime i j z i z j j as sum of squares see I am just following the steps which I took when I was talking about the mathematical um, uh, these two videos where I discussed about the some of the mathematical quantities which I will be using in this course so there we had done all this in general I am just applying those things uh, for the specific case of um, this triatomic molecule okay as a sum of squares very good um, so what we have to do is so let me write this using uh, column vectors and matrices so I will write u prime i j z i z j as column vector or row vector z transpose matrix u prime column vector z okay and the entries are z1 z2 and z3 now this I know that I can diagonalize u prime by an orthogonal transformation which means that there are matrices I mean which means that there is a matrix O which and which when I put O transpose and O next to o pr u prime it will become a diagonal matrix okay so that's what I'm going to utilize here so let me write this as u prime okay o transpose o o o transpose so basically I've done nothing because o transpose o is unity this is also unity so I've done nothing and you have z transpose so I have written this original thing again so this is identically equal to this I have done nothing um, now as I know that by the way this O is the one which diagonalizes so this matrix here I will call lambda okay and lambda will be a diagonal matrix and this quantity I will call Q and this then becomes q prime okay q uh, not q prime sorry q transpose so what we get here is q transpose lambda q okay q is a column vector where q is q1 q2 and q3 okay and my lambda is um, let me write it here diagonal lambda 1 
sorry lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 okay that's good so what do i have for my lagrangian now my lagrangian looks like this half q1 dot square okay and then um, from here there was a half already let me write down first all the kinetic pieces so half q2 dot square plus half q3 dot square then the potential terms will give you minus half lambda 1 q 1 square is that clear so this so there is a half uh, already it was there which I have not written here maybe I should write half half and a half and a half okay fine so this is q uh, if you write it in components it will be q1 lambda 1 q 1 plus q2 lambda 2 q2 and so forth which is what is giving us these terms minus half lambda 2 q2 square and then you have the lambda 3 term and lambda 3 is 0 so I am not going to write this okay so that term is gone which means that q3 is cyclic as I mentioned last time okay which also means that q3 dot this is the momentum uh, corresponding to q3 is a conserved quantity so it has to be constant okay which means the derivative dq over dt this is a constant that's one thing and if you look at the Lagrangian apart from the appearance of q3 which we will talk about later uh, it's trivial actually what you have is a sum of two harmonic oscillators which I mentioned last time so if you look at this piece and that piece they together form a harmonic oscillator and these two form a another harmonic oscillator okay with frequencies given by um, the frequencies of two oscillators are given by omega 1 square is lambda 1 and omega 2 square is lambda 2 okay that's good there was something which I wanted to say let me see mm. uh, I don't remember now anyway okay this is fine now <coughs> so here is my Lagrangian okay okay let me go to the next slide so the Lagrangian that we have I will write down as L of I mean L is a harmonic oscillator here with described by frequency 1 Lagrangian of harmonic oscillator described by frequency 2 plus a term which is half q3 dot square that's what we have and this um, just a second let me remove this animation timeline now this system I can um, pictorially represent like this so my system is equivalent to that of having two harmonic oscillators let's say I have two pendulums one which corresponds to the coordinate q1 and has frequency um, omega 1 which is square root of lambda 1 basically and then you have another harmonic oscillator described by your normal coordinate q2 and which this pendulum has frequency omega 2 okay I'll tell you that later this uh, is really unimportant so that's why I'm not worried about it I'll show you later but anyway the the Lagrangian for our system is this I mean it's the system is equivalent to this see don't worry about what algebra we have done and uh, 
what system we started with as far as where we stand now this is the lagrangian of the system and it is equivalent to this thing right the, this is the system which we are having now in front of us okay now if this is a system that is given to you then it is your choice which pendulum or which oscillator you want to set in motion so you may choose to keep this one at rest so that this one does not move at all so the mass keeps stand sitting here and only this oscillator is oscillating okay so let me write that is one option you have so you can put the coordinate q1 to be zero at all the times and only q2 is oscillating okay that's one so i say that uh my system is in mode is oscillating in mode 2 okay if i should have written mode 1 first but anyway no problem if i put q2 to be zero at all the times meaning this guy is just standing still here at rest and only this one is oscillating then of course q1 is oscillating then then my system in os is oscillating in mode normal mode 1 that's that's what we we say okay so and of course you can do this because these two oscillators are independent they are not coupled okay and that's what um a normal mode is and that's how you can choose to set these uh choose to um make your system oscillate in one mode or the other okay so you may simultaneously put all other modes let's say your system was equivalent to having hundreds of oscillators so you may choose to excite only one normal mode and all other modes you can uh keep at rest now okay that's all good looks nice but you might be wondering how you are going to put your molecule to oscillate in the first mode or in the second mode what sh what should you do that your os uh, your triatomic molecule is oscillating in the first mode or the second mode okay so for that you need to know how your normal coordinates are related to the coordinates x1 x2 and x3 okay so that's what we uh, are going to address so let me write down in short that to let okay i hope you understand what you are saying so let us find qi's in terms of xi okay that's our task now okay so let me use black good and that is not difficult let me put a okay anyhow so you know um i already said that if i look at my matrix u prime it's diagonalized by an orthogonal transformation which is this and that will put it in this form where lambda is diagonal and our uh, the diagonalizing matrix o or o transpose let me write down for o transpose are the eigen vectors xi1 xi2 these xi1 xi2 and xi3 are the eigen vectors of u prime okay that you will already know from your uh, matrix uh, understanding of matrices uh, which we also talked about couple of videos ago okay so these xi1 xi2 xi3 are the column vectors okay so this is a column this is a column this is a column that's how you get a matrix and as we talked some time back these are eigen vectors
okay also remember that xi eyes should be normalized okay i hope you uh, understand why you see when you solve the eigen value uh, equation you get eigen vectors but any multiple of the eigen vector is also an eigen vector with the same eigen value right and you also remember that uh, when we were talking about diagonalization we uh, when we looked at orthogonal matrices the matrix for the matrix to be orthogonal all not only all the columns should be orthogonal to each other each column vector should be normal so it's the magnitude of that uh, each column vector should be 1 so whatever eigen vectors you get you should normalize them okay so so that their magnitudes um, is magnitude of that vector each vector eigen vector is 1 okay so that is what um, the xi i should be now i'll give you a set of simple exercises to do so that you can get arrive at the at the final result so let me list them down exercise 1 okay maybe some so find xi i and construct construct o transpose the o transpose which i talked just now so that's what you have to do which basically amounts to doing the following so you should show that is you show that for lambda 1 equals k by m for this um, eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector xi1 is minus 1 okay the color has changed anyway i'll write um, let me try to change the color mm, okay minus 1 0 1 one. okay and as i said we should normalize it which means i should divide it by a constant c1 where c1 will be just xi1 square under root okay if you do so then the vector xi1 will be normalized and also uh, please find the eigen vector corresponding to this eigen value which i am writing now these are the ones which we found earlier right so just find xi2 xi2 is again you have to normalize so i am dividing by 1 over c2 which you should find and you'll find when you calculate the eigen vector this is minus 2 small m over m capital m and square root okay fine i'll tell you why i had stopped for a second you see i was checking the dimensions so all the time you should be checking for dimensions so this is dimensionless this is dimensionless so which is good so this guy should also be dimensionless otherwise clearly we have made a mistake so here you have one mass and here you have two but then it's a square root so it uh, cancels the mass dimension uh, and that makes it perfectly fine dimensionless uh, dimension wise so hopefully that is correct um then you should find out the c2 c2 is again xi2 square okay if you divide by this this will be a normalized vector the xi2 and um for lambda 3 equal to 0 you will get xi3 um 1 over c3 1 then you have capital m over small m in the square root and then you have 1 here okay and as before c3 is xi3 square 
under root okay um uh, let me save me again video okay now um it's trivial but i will nevertheless write down your c1 is root 2 c2 is 2 plus 4m over m in the square root and c3 will turn out to be 2 capital m over m okay so please do these exercises um yeah fine and then what yes then next exercise is the following exercise 2 okay i want to switch back to black color okay um now you have to form o and o transpose and as i showed earlier our row transpose is just xi1 xi2 xi3 these three columns column vectors placed together and um, check that when you have placed all these normalized xi1 xi2 xi3 into a column into a matrix they satisfy this okay this will give you confidence that the calculation you have done is correct or the results that i'm giving to you is are correct now let's look at exercise number three so also check that you o u prime o transpose that comes out to be the diagonal matrix which we have been writing so that will be another check um, now let's look at the normal coordinates okay we wanted to know what q is in terms of uh, our x1 x2 and x3 and that's easy to find out because your q is o times z where z is the column vector containing z1 z2 z3 let's go back and see that somewhere here i should have written it um yeah here you see the q is o times z right okay and if you also recall what z was z was obtained by multiplying a diagonal matrix m1 square root of m2 square root of m3 where m1 m2 m3 m1 and m3 are small m and capital m uh, is m2 this times x1 x2 x3 okay let's go back and check somewhere here should be yeah here you see the z is related to x by this which is what i'm writing now in terms of uh, a diagonal matrix okay so again another exercise check that when you multiply all this o the one the o you have found already this diagonal matrix and this x1 you get the following so you get the q to be this um x3 minus x1 m over 2 in the square root then you get x1 minus 2x2 plus x3 okay and the coefficient is square not square root m over 2m 2m plus capital m the entire thing is divided by capital m and this is in the square root let's check dimension wise this and this piece have same dimensions and here it is a square root of m so we should have a square root of m here as well now see this is m times m so m square divided by mass it becomes m 
so the there is a mass in the square root and there is a mass in the numerator okay and um, so this works out and then the third one is and that looks no it does not look strange it's fine 2m plus m i'll tell you why i was surprised for a moment i saw this uh, factor in the denominator which is 1 over square root of m and i thought i'm doing something wrong but then i have a mass here which these together make the same as uh, here so it's all fine there is no mistake i believe okay so that is the q so you know what your normal coordinates are in terms of x1 x2 and x3 okay that's good let's see what next okay so here i have written down the normal coordinates okay and let's uh, first settle the q3 okay as i have said several times before q3 is cyclic it doesn't appear in the lagrangian because the corresponding eigen value lambda 3 is 0 okay so that term will not appear uh, q3 will not appear but uh, there is a kinetic term corresponding to q3 and because um, q3 is cyclic the q3 dot okay that is conserved meaning this is a constant that also we have talked about uh, talked about several times which means that this quantity here okay if i take the time derivative of this that would be a constant so since this is a constant i will absorb it into the constant of the right hand side in this equation and i get the condition that d over dt of m x1 plus x3 plus capital m x2 the time derivative of this entire thing is zero sorry is yeah it's zero correct uh, no 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 constant as i said constant okay now to interpret what this means let's uh, do the following so we go back to our molecule here it is okay and let's say here our capital m the mass uh, the particle number 2 is here let's say the particle number 3 is here um, and the particle number 1 is here okay and along the x axis let's mark their equilibrium positions okay so here let me call it x10 this position this position as x20 and this as x30 okay so these are the equilibrium configurations and as the particle moves so, uh, this is the displacements are given by x1 x2 and x3 okay uh and send that what i'm doing right now is marking along the x axis the values of uh the the positions of equilibrium configuration okay this is different from what i was um, saying earlier and there is uh, they are uh, not in conflict with each other so earlier i had put x them to be zero but then those were the values of the generalized coordinates which were put to zero in the equilibrium configuration but here i am marking where they are along the x axis okay so it's clear that there is no contradiction with what i said earlier this this is fine okay so let's ask uh, now um, so let's say at any time t if the displacement is x1 x2 or x3 then the particle will be located at located at um, x i 0 plus x i right 
where i runs from 1 to 3 this will be the location of the particle okay now let's um, ask where the center of mass is so the location of the center of mass i'm going to denote by r okay so center of mass is located at m so this first one this guy it is located at x10 plus x1 and the other guy on the this end <coughs> is located at x30 plus x3 and they have uh, this and that have both mass m so i can combine here plus x30 plus x3 and then you have mx2 0 plus x2 this entire thing, thing divided by the total mass of the system okay which i can write down as m x10 plus x30 plus capital m x2 0 plus m x1 0 plus x sorry m x1 plus x2 sorry x3 plus capital m x2 okay okay and i should divide by the total mass here as well okay very good now the cons um yeah let's go um now if i take dr over dt this term will give zero contribution because these are all constants and you get a non-zero contribution from here which is 1 over 2m plus m d over dt of that quantity okay this is a constant now i can choose that constant it's up to me right uh, so i choose that constant to be zero okay so choose dr over dt to be zero okay what it means is that the speed of or the velocity of the center of mass is zero so the center of mass stays put at one place okay that's what this equation is saying okay so if i do so then it means that the center of mass uh, is at rest okay that's good now this means this means um, that my r is a constant right because dr over dt is constant uh, zero so r is a constant now r is the sum of these two pieces this and this okay and if r is a constant then this entire thing also has to be a constant okay and if i uh, the, if this has to be a constant and these things x1 x2 and x3 they are changing with time i can ensure that the r will remain constant only if this is this vanishes so if this vanishes then r is going to remain a constant so all i am saying is that these displacements x1 x2 and x3 they have to be uh, they have to be obeying a constraint that center of mass remains fixed and which is uh, equivalent to saying that i have the constraint mx1 plus x3 plus 
m x 2 equal to 0 ok. So, that is what I get. Okay. Now, what I will do is I will take this okay, and substitute in Q and look at what my normal coordinates look like when I impose uh, impose this. Okay, this is not, not nothing extra, it is a choice I make. It is basically saying that I am going to a frame of reference where uh, center of mass is at rest. If you go to another one, it will be moving with some velocity and also um, yeah, that is what basically I am saying. Okay. Okay, so, let us make this substitution in Q and please show that this is what you get. This is trivial to show. So, exercise show that upon substituting um, m x 1 plus x 3 plus m x 2 equal to 0, our normal coordinates become the following. Let me write down, I hope this is the last time I am writing this, x 3 minus x 1 okay and looks this was this we had already yes that we had already um, the second one looks neater now so you have m m 2m plus capital m over 2m and this is the coefficient of x3 plus x1 okay and the third one is 0 Okay, please show this. This is a trivial exercise. Now, this all looks very neat. This uh, coordinate Q is uh, Q3 is 0. We have fixed it to 0. Um, okay, now, now let us interpret what we have as our coordinates Q1 and Q2. So, let us say my system is oscillating in um, in the mode q1 okay and q2 mode is not activated so let's call mode q1 okay so which is basically this thing you remember i was saying i can activate whichever i want so that's what i'm doing now so I am activating mode. I am activating only the mode Q1. If I do so, and I keep the Q2 at rest, meaning Q2 will be zero at all the times, that would amount to saying that this is Q2. Remember, x3 should be equal to minus x1 at all the times in this mode. So let's go back um, to see them. Uh, do I have it somewhere? Yeah, here. So it means um, that x1 and x3 are opposite to each other, right? You see here x3 is equal to minus x1. So if x3, let's say, goes in this direction by some amount, then x1 goes in the opposite, opposite direction by the same amount. Okay? And when this goes this way, this goes this way. Okay, so the molecule and x and x two of course remains put here. I mean x two has to remain at the same place all the times because otherwise the center of mass will not be uh, at the same location. So which means that in this uh, uh, mode, this mass stays put and these two masses oscillate in a very symmetric manner okay so if this is going out that is going out this this is coming inside that is coming inside so that oscillation is a symmetric oscillation so molecule moves symmetrically in this 
vibrates in a symmetric manner. Okay, so I can also rename my Q1 to be Q symmetric. Okay, so that's a symmetric mode. Another one would be um, mode Q2, in which Q2 is uh, moving, oscillating, and Q1 is at rest. So Q1 t is equal to 0 for all times. And that would imply that x3 is equal to x1. Okay, let's go back and see. It means that if x3 goes in this direction, then x1 also goes in this direction. And clearly then x2 has to, x2 will have to move in the opposite direction, right? To make the center of mass remain fixed at its original location. So in this case, the molecule is moving asymmetrically so there is no it's not a symmetric kind of motion but it is asymmetric so here molecule vibrates asymmetrically and i can call also rename the label q2 to q asymmetric okay that's um that's about the motion of a linear triatomic molecule and as I said we were only looking at the longitudinal long, L -O -N -G -L, longitudinal oscillations okay now you may ask what if I um, look at other other modes so what i mean this molecule can do other things as well okay so we'll talk about um, first we'll talk about a general molecule and what will be its vibrational modes in most general context in the next video and yeah and we'll um, say more about this triatomic molecule i believe Okay, so good for this and I hope you are doing all the exercises that I have been uh, giving during these lectures. See you in the next video.